So in this exercise, we'll look at breaking down a brick wall using MoGraph Dynamics uh, and a few new uh, settings in the Dynamics tag. So let's again start off with a floor. So create an environment moment floor, and let's make this a collider. Tags, simulation, collider body. Okay, I want to make a brick wall now. So I'm just going to make a very basic version. I'll start with a cube, and I'm going to make a brick. So let's just raise this up a little bit. Um, and let's just change the scaling on this cube so it looks kind of like a brick. I think that will do. Okay, so we'll put this in a cloner and make a wall out of it. So let's make a MoGraph cloner and put the brick in the cloner. Now, what we're going to use in the cloner is uh, an array called a uh, honeycomb array, which will create uh, a whole bunch of duplicates of our clone, but it'll offset them slightly as well. Uh, so they're not stacked directly on top of each other. Um, and we get a classic sort of brick wall pattern if we adjust the size and width of our um, uh, array of clones here. Now I'm going to put a few more uh, clones into my wall. So let's have about 20 along the width. And let's have about 18 on the height. Let's have a look and just move that brick wall up. Actually, that's probably more than I need. Let's take a few out of there. Let's go down to 12. That should be fine. Oops. Just move that so it's just above the surface. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap between all the bricks. Um, what you don't want to do when you're doing any kind of rigid body dynamics is uh, have any of your dynamic objects intersecting with each other. If they do, as soon as the dynamic, dynamic starts, They'll, they'll fly apart or there'll be some really odd uh, movement of your um, dynamics objects. So we want to have a little bit of a gap between any of our dynamics objects. I'm just going to make that gap a little bit smaller if I can, if I'm clicking the right button here. There we go. And I want my wall just above the ground. Again, I don't want it going through the ground because that will cause problems. Actually, we can have a look at that right now. Let's just quickly check that. Let's make these intersect and put that in the ground. And let's put a rigid body tag on my clones. Simulation, rigid body. And let's see what happens with these intersecting clones. They all fly apart. Okay, now we definitely don't want that happening right at the start. This is supposed to be a solid brick wall. What's happening there is all the rigid bodies are trying to push themselves apart so that they're not intersecting with each other. So let's just adjust my clone there. Um, and let's put a bit of a gap. And again, I'm just going to raise this off the ground slightly. Now, this is not entirely natural because we've got all these gaps between the clones. So what I can do is I can play my simulation here and you'll notice that my bricks all settle, and we've actually got one that's a bit unstable and falls off. My bricks are now sitting on the ground. They've all collided with each other and actually are forming a, a complete solid wall with very little gaps in it now. I'd like my clones to start in that position. So what I can actually do is, before I hit rewind, I can go to this tag on my cloner, and in the Dynamics tab, I can set this as the initial state. So if I just click on that, now when I rewind, this is where these clones start from. So we've taken um, the clones with a little bit of a gap and we've let them settle into place, and then we've set that at the, as the initial state for these clones. So that's actually much better as my brick wall. Okay, so now I've got my brick wall done. I wanna make uh, something to, to bash through it. Um, I'm just gonna make a sphere for this um, and make that a rigid body. So let's go primitive sphere and let's put the sphere over here and make it a little bigger and again i want to make sure it's not sitting through the ground at all so let's bring it just above the ground now what we can do with rigid bodies is we can apply um, some initial speed or velocity to a, um, a rigid body so at the moment obviously nothing's happening uh, i can grab my sphere and put a rigid body tag on that and all that's going to do at the moment is fall to the ground. But if we have a look at the rigid body tag on the sphere, one thing we can see in the dynamics tag, if we have a look through the settings, there's a custom initial velocity. Velocity is your speed in a certain distance. So I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to say at the start of this animation, 
the ball, the sphere is moving in this direction. This is the blue axis, which is the Z axis. So if we look at these settings here, this is always X, Y, and Z. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom velocity in the Z axis for my ball. So I'm going to push it or send it that way into the bricks. So at frame zero, what I'm going to do is put, um, I don't know, let's set that as 100. I'm just guessing here. Let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, that's pretty weak. So that's definitely not going to break any bricks, but we're on the right track. So let's make that 10 times bigger. And let's give it an initial velocity of 1,000 centimeters in this z-axis. And let's see how that goes. Yeah, that's still pretty weak. Oh, but it's doing something. There we go. Okay, let's really slam this now. Let's make it 20,000 and see if we can blast these bricks. Brilliant. There we go. So we destroyed our brick wall with a sphere. Maybe that's a little too strong. Maybe I'll turn it down a little bit. And there we go. We've got a destructed brick wall. Destructed, is that a word? Uh, we've got a destroyed brick wall with a sphere. So that's just using the rigid body tag with um, an initial velocity set um, in that particular direction. Okay, now one other thing I want to just quickly look at here is now that, let's just say this is our animation finished, we just wanted to destroy a brick wall. Um, what we would like to be able to do is maybe animate some other things around there. Maybe there's some text that comes on, um, but what we want to be able to do is animate and move things around the brick wall. And it would be great if we could scrub through the timeline and see the brick wall um, so that we would know when to animate different elements around it. We can't really do that with Dynamics because, as I mentioned in a, a previous video, Dynamics work by playing through a timeline in real time and calculating each frame one after the other. So it means that you can't really scrub a timeline and get an accurate view of what's going on. We have got a setting that lets us do that, though, and it's called caching. And caching, it basically records the dynamics in the scene. It records the position, rotation, and scale of all these objects once they've been simulated. And once it's cached, we can then save that uh, and we can, uh, it allows us to scrub through in the timeline. So it's a really simple thing to do. So let's have a look at that. So here's my animation set up. On any of these rigid body tags, I can go to the cache tab. And what I can do is bake all of the caches in the scene. This will bake all objects that are dynamic. So if I hit that, what we'll get is a little timeline as it calculates all those dynamics. Once it's finished, we should be able to see there's our animation done, but we should also now be able to grab the time, the playhead and scrub through the timeline and actually see everything working uh, as we scrub backwards and forwards. So all that movement from the dynamics has been recorded into the cache. Now, if we change something, perhaps we come back and say, actually, we want our ball a little bit smaller. Um, what we can do then is we can clear all the cache. So that deletes all that recorded information. Uh, and then we can bake it again, or maybe, uh, actually, let's just bake that again. Now, just notice that my set initial state doesn't seem to have worked. Um, but the cache, let's have a look. Yes, the cache is working there. Now, for some reason on my bake, on the first frame, it's using my set initial, case, uh, set initial state, but not on frame zero. Now, that's not really too big a deal. I can always start my animation at frame one instead of frame zero, and that will give me the correct animation there. Um, so that's just caching dynamics. Really helpful thing to be able to do. Uh, great once you've done your animation and you want to be able to scrub through it uh, see it working and perhaps animate things around it. So that's uh, dynamics, set initial state, and caching.